Absolutely they right. Not. And reason for that is that the so far there is no direct connect between the two. But say if the tourist can also, those who are coming to Chandigarh or Amritsar also visit Sangol and see and uh, he is in uh, contact there with the artisan, with the craftsman, the craftsman will benefit much more and right. plus the demand for it right. would grow. Yes, sir. So far as the middleman is concerned, we started the experiment when I was with tourism of the Surajkund Crafts Miller, mm -hmm. where we brought the craftsmen to Surajkund is a tourist complex okay. and they were selling directly to the customers, eliminating the middlemen. All right. So they got the profits and not only that, during that period they got orders mm -hmm. from large number of people to get them busy throughout the year. So that is one experiment which has proved successful. It's 25 years since that uh, Mela is on and it has provided tremendous employment opportunities and uh, marketing facilities. Uh, that, that's very, very, very nice to know that. Uh, Mr. Mohotra, let me come to you. You have visited forts and heritage buildings and monuments across UK, Ireland and Scotland recently, right? How much efforts do you see has been put in preserving them and, and the culture uh, over there than, uh, you know, efforts being put in India? Slim, uh, having seen the Table Mountain, Robin Island in South Africa, the Statue of Christ in Brazil, extinct volcanoes in Mauritius and now recently so many buildings in Ireland, Scotland and England. I think we are missing out on a heritage bonanza. We have havelis, we have monuments, we have forts, Sangol is a living example, but they are, they are totally untapped from point of tourism, from point of employment, from point of earning revenue. Mm -hmm. If we showcase this in a proper perspective, put them on a global map, put them on websites, not only we can, can we earn in terms of tourism, but we can help a lot of good people like Professor Chatterjee and Lord Rana to reconnect with their roots. We now have a large number of philanthropic NRIs who are willing to put in money, reconnect their second and third generations back to the roots. And I think this is, this is something which the government sectors have totally missed out. These, these, these uh, heritage spots could be actually money spinners in terms of tourism, in terms of revenue, and in terms of reconnecting NRAs back to their roots. Right. Mr. Chatterjee, in comparison to uh, what I just asked about, uh, about the other uh, heritage things and uh, the rural and the culture itself, what are we missing here in India? Uh, first of all, thanks very much for <coughs> the contributions made by the previous speakers. I entirely agree with them and also your interactions. The answer to your question is that is not only India. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends how you define the term heritage. It is a multidimensional term. I think that education, where I come in, would be there. Public awareness. All right. And heritage should be, in my opinion, regarded as a center point for creating further things, not mm -hmm. only socioeconomic development, but also public awareness that it is important for us. Right. And the issue that you raise, that the, the things they manufacture here, they are not regarded highly. I want to change it, okay. not emotionally. Mm -hmm. That is the part of my public awareness system and process that they should not feel, they should feel proud of what they're doing. You need a further education because it is the center point for socio-economic development. So we are not concerned only with preservation of architectural works or whatever. That right. will be there. In addition to that, we have to define heritage mm -hmm. in a much wider context there so, so as to include all of the related things also. Uh, Mr. Chatterjee, let me... <coughs> you know start from where we ended in the first segment how will you be able to uh, contribute if a state would want to generate a revenue from uh, you know uh, the rural heritage what ideas do you have for that um, I will encourage the <coughs> local handicaps people mm -hmm. by encouraging them to uh, demonstrate their skills which will add to the value of the products there and then your market value goes up Secondly, I have to motivate and mobilize the ideas into the villages so that you can get contributions mm -hmm. to create a fund there, a voluntary fund there. Third, I think that when they have been educated and public awareness has been created, then it becomes self-financing. All right. Mr. Mahutra, how uh, does the law protect the uh, rural heritage? I mean, we have law for, for the yes. monuments, to preserve <coughs> the monuments and the you know, heritage buildings, but is there any such law? We have laws, we have the Archaeological Survey of India looking after the enactments 
and uh, very happily we have uh, a very energized judiciary which is intervening there are numerous instances where the high court has stepped in on in public interest to stop the demolition of buildings to be replaced by commercial institutions let, let me support it with an example here we are talking about the monuments and the buildings like the way we are talking about the rural heritage uh, as you know our guest said that it's about uh, the folk uh, the uh, cuisine the uh, you know the handicraft and all i'll give you a, a small example punjabi singers have actually ruined the the punjabi folk and is there any way i mean which in which you know we can actually protect those uh, uh, folk songs and not let them you know destroy I, that i think just mean uh, the, here the angle will be social you cannot through a law change the social mores or enforce a social conduct in uh, <coughs> preserving social issues particularly relating to folk music art and culture mm -hmm. these are self inculcated values you have to have energized motivated individuals you have to teach your children what is heritage i think the previous speakers have very well highlighted this issue you have to teach your children you have to teach your uh, students in colleges and in educational institutions only when you imbibe the cultural heritage bug into them can you come up with the protection absolutely laws will not help you uh, yes sir to your first question yes yeah, which please. is linked to this this scheme should not be addressed predominantly to us for us mm -hmm. they must establish links to heritage also i have noticed that in many countries local heritage is neglected so we have to have two sets of plan there the dads for second generation i'm very worried about it are about them that they are going to lose their link mm -hmm. so that is one way of getting it done the second is that the inspiration must spring from the local community right. this is they should be proud of them this is our heritage we are actually uh, left to wait yeah one please quick thing yes sir <coughs> take the case if you are familiar the famous chatisgarh singer tijan bai she was an unknown person right somebody made effort so if through this preservation of heritage they get the exposure they can become international celebrities Absolutely. we organize the festivals of india and you see the unknown people till then became international big names mm -hmm. amti jan bai is just one example, one example right. so think, in this you can have many more like that crafts mela is an ideal example of this issue you see what you mentioned about the punjabi singers ha ji there is need for documentation mm -hmm. you record so that it's not lost to mm -hmm. uh, future generations so there is need for documentation recording create archives for uh, not only songs but you have myths legends you go to people they give accounts of uh, various things mm -hmm. even of cuisine so there has to be documentation so that you have something available for future is right uh, lord rana uh, like this is uh, just the beginning of of a dream but tell me to successfully uh, preserve rural heritage uh, where do you think you will have to make the greatest efforts at convincing would be it would be like convincing the rural uh, people convincing uh, the central and state uh, governments or convincing the corporate houses it's doing all of those and we are, what we are doing on 18th and 19th of november this year in sagor we are hosting a two day event okay where the topic would be uh, rural heritage preservation entrepreneurship rural regeneration and we will be inviting speakers from different parts of india mm -hmm. who will speak about it but at the same time we are going to invite artists and artisans from punjab to set up stalls there okay so that we display their wares and they have the opportunity to sell even if people don't buy they get they know what is there mm -hmm. and then in the evening there will be cultural program which will be done by local people okay okay so that that's it is that's 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 three right. levels right. intellectual level talking about it mm -hmm. bringing the artists and artisans to show their wares and sell it Mm -hmm. And then the evening, the cultural part. Um, Mr. Mr. Uh, tell us how how <coughs> is the government contributing uh, to it? You see, we are not looking to the government in any uh, major way mm -hmm. because we are an NGO, right? And we feel even abroad, most of the activities in the rural field are through NGOs. 
and NGO, the importance of NGOs has not been fully realized by government because in certain areas NGOs can do a much better job, particularly in the social uh, field, than even government, which government is constrained by its regulations, by bureaucracy and all that, which NGOs don't have. We are basically uh, trying to motivate people, get government support would be there in, in, for certain projects, but we are looking beyond government. But uh, is there any support from the government, I mean, uh, you know, in no, uh, preserving uh, the, the, the heritage? It's not about only the, the program which... No, no, the government support is there. Mm -hmm. There is a rural development ministry which uh, has a large number of projects. The Trifid, uh, this thing with tribal culture is there. The Ministry of Culture supports local rural museums and other Do things. you think that is enough? It's not enough. That's why there is need for uh, more and more NGOs to come to the field. Mm -hmm. All right. And to supplement government efforts. That was the reason why intact was set up at the initiative of Mr. Indira Gandhi to supplement what Archaeological mm -hmm. Survey of India was doing. Right. I, I have been instructed to wrap up this uh, show quickly. So one question to everybody. I'll start with uh, Mr. Malhotra. Now each, uh, every one of you have traveled the world, had a chance to see wonderful places and meet uh, the extraordinary people. How long do you think you could actually uh, reside in a village? If given a chance and if ever asked. I have been to Sangol. Okay twice and thrice and I feel like going back again and again because I think that is where culture and civilization is buried and uh, happily I could keep going back whenever required to. Mr. Chatterjee. As long as necessary, uh, my main point is that villages should be developed first otherwise the cities are getting crowded so villages must be made attractive and Absolutely. one of the ways of doing that is important. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Important in right, Mr. Sharma. No, I would be very honest. I mean, I'm happy to visit, but uh, as a good number of us, except Mr. Madhotra, I think we are all senior citizens here. We need <laughs> health care, we need other things, and without that, it is very difficult to sp spend long time right. there. So it cannot be without integrated development where you have access to this. And certainly, uh, the love of the village is, or the place you came from, is there in everyone. Absolutely, Mr. Mishra. Well, I would love to uh, stay in a village, provided I, I feel that I can do something. My staying there makes a difference to the village, right? And I can contribute to mm -hmm. this thing. Otherwise, merely staying in a village uh, as a romantic uh, idea doesn't appeal to me very much. Absolutely. Last word from you, Lord Ram. I could live in a village without any difficulty provided, as Sharma ji said, there is a health service available if I need it mm -hmm. and the connectivity right. and the power if it was there. Because what happens in villages, there's power is there only part of the day. Absolutely. And uh, the, there's no uh, Big electricity health cuts. service, there's no medical. Right. So if these things were there, and this is in Ireland, a lot of people live in villages in Ireland. Mm -hmm. I've been living there for a long time. Right. And they live happily, and the quality of life in villages is better than in cities. Right. Well, Just can you yeah. remember the former president Kalam had this favorite thing of his called Pura, mm -hmm. providing, you know, urban amenities in rural area. Right. I mean, that's ultimately we all have to work in that direction. Absolutely. And heritage would be part of that. Right, thank you so much for coming into our studios this evening. Migration from villages to yes. urban right. areas. And Sangol right. is going to be a pura. Right, thank, <laughs> thank you so much everybody. Our extraordinarily rich and vibrantly alive rural traditions have an enormous potential. However, to exploit it, broad-based participation both from the government and the corporate sector and dissemination of information is needed. This will go a long way in conserving the rich rural heritage and at the same time boost rural development. That's all we have in Prime. We meet again tomorrow with another issue. Till then, good luck and goodbye.